Hello pre-calculus students and welcome to a video on finding domain algebraically. So we've already done some work on finding domain algebraically, but this is going to expand on that. Um, we're going to expand the kinds of functions involving radicals and rationals um, and combinations. In, in doing so, we're going to do a little bit of review of factoring and a little bit of review of sign charts. Okay, these are going to both be necessary in order to answer the questions on this page. So let's look at our first example. Um, oh, the two things to remember here, they're, they're reviewed here, is that the radicand inside of a square root can only be values that are greater than or equal to zero, and that the second one is that the denominator cannot uh, is not defined if it's zero, so we exclude anything that will make the denominator zero. And we're going to be looking for those same two things as we did um, before. And just a quick note, um, I'm saying square roots, but technically this is true of any even roots. You can't take the fourth root of a negative number or the sixth root of a negative number either. So that um, doesn't actually come up here, but it's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so let's look at our first example. So we're looking for the domain of this function. Now the first thing to notice is that there's no square root. So yay, there's no problem thinking of a radicand or inequalities. All we have to do is focus on the denominator and make sure that 2x squared minus x minus 3 can't be, is not 0. So we have to make sure that if, if there's any values that will make that 0, that those values have to be excluded from the domain. So this is a factorable expression, and um, we factor this um, trinomial with two sets of parentheses. And the only way to get the first times the first, 2x squared, is 2x times x. That's the only way to get it. And the only way to get a 3 is 3 times 1. But the question is, and I'm getting my pencil on now because we might have to erase, I'm not sure. If we put the 3 here and the 1 here, can that possibly get us back if we multiply it back and that gets where we started? Well, the signs have to be different. It has to be negative, so they have to be different. And there has to be more negatives and positives because they have to add up to negative x. So I'm going to put a negative here and a positive here. And let's see what happens. We would have 2x times x, which is 2x squared, negative 3x and plus 2x, which is minus x, and minus 3. So I'm going to get rid of the pencil because I've got it factored correctly. Now you all come here with different, different skills in factoring, and we're going to have, that's actually going to be one of our big um, uh, supporting skill topics that we're going to cover, and we're going to, I'm going to make some review videos on that. Um, but for now, I like to do this stuff by, um, by guess and check, which is what I just did. There's not that many options, so I did the one that made the most sense and it worked. Okay, so we just have to finish solving this. 2x minus 3 can't be 0. x plus 1 can't be 0. That's the way you would solve it if it was an equation. That's the same way you would solve it when you're trying to exclude stuff. Add 3 and divide by 2, so x cannot be 3 over 2. Subtract 1, x cannot be negative 1. So those are our two exclusions. Now it's really easy to see that if you made x negative 1, you would have 2 minus negative 1, which is 3, minus 3 is 0. That would ruin it. Okay, you would, you would not be, it's not defined there. Same thing will happen with the 3 over 2, but I'm just not going to talk you through that. It's just the same thing as true. All right, we want these um, in interval notation. So we have a number line. Um, we're going to put both points on that number line. And they're both excluded like that. And so everything else, so everything between here, everything over here, and everything over here, there's three intervals. And we're just going to name them both, uh, all three with the union. So we have negative infinity to negative 1, unioned with one to, negative 1 to 3 halves, and unioned with 3 halves to infinity. OK, let's look at the next one. <clears throat> OK, so in the second problem, we do have uh, an inequality that we're going to have to work with because with a radical, remember that we have to we have to say that x squared minus nine is greater than or equal to zero. 
and that will be our domain for this one. Not an exclusion, we're just looking at the domain right there. We just have to figure out what does that mean. Okay, so there's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to factor, so I'm going to have x plus 3 times x minus 3 greater than or equal to 0. Now when you're solving an inequality that has two parts like that or more than one value, you have to use critical points. So the, the critical points are always the zeros and undefined values. In this case, there's, there's just zeros, 3 and negative 3. So I'm going to look, I'm going to create a number line. I'm going to put uh, what makes each one of these zero. So this one would be zero when I have a negative 3. This one would be zero when I have a positive 3. Okay, those points will be included because I'm including equal to zero. So those points will be part of my solution. And now I, I, these points will separate what, what is part of the solution and what isn't part of the solution. So I need to look at these three intervals and figure out which ones are actually greater than or equal to zero. So I'm going to pick a test number over here. How about negative four? Anything that's less than negative three will work. Here I'll pick a zero and here I'll pick a positive 4. I'm just picking the simplest numbers that I can that I can choose here. So with a negative 4, this would be a negative, right? This would be a negative. So multiply them together would be a positive. Okay, this is why it's called a sign chart. We don't really need numbers. We just need to know whether it's positive or negative. What's the sign over here? It's positive. That's greater than or equal to 0. So this will be part of the solution. When I pick 0, I get a positive, right? 0 plus 3 is positive. 0 minus 3 is negative. That's going to give me a negative. That will not be greater than or equal to 0. That's not part of my solution set because it would represent a negative inside the radical. When I pick 4, I get a positive and a positive again. Here I get a positive for both, so this will be a positive. So that will be part of the solution set. Okay, so our solution is everything from uh, just these two intervals on both sides of the th negative 3 and 3. So the domain would be uh, from negative infinity, from negative infinity to negative 3, including negative 3, union with 3 to infinity. And there it is. Okay. Last example has both and factoring, so this one's a little bit more work. So first of all, we have to look at um, the radical has to be greater than or equal to 0. So we know that x squared minus x minus 20 must be greater than or equal to 0. Oops. Okay. Um, and so we're going to solve that the same way that we solved this one up here, or the, the previous example. We're going to factor first. So we have x minus, um, let's see what we have here. So we have x minus 5 and x plus 4. That will give us um, what we need to have that factored. Okay, and this is not actually a review of how to factor. This is just a review that factoring happens, and you're going to need to know it. So hopefully you remember how to do that. There's various ways that you might have learned it. And so this means we're going to look at critical points here. And um, we actually have another critical point to add on because we also know from the denominator, we know that 2x minus 20 cannot be 0. In other words, 2x cannot be 20. In other words, x cannot be 20 divided by 2, which is 10. So we've got three numbers to put in our number line this time. Okay, we've got um, a 5 that would make this 0. We've got a negative 4 that would make this one 0. So a negative 4, 5, and we've got a 10. Okay, now we know 10 is an open circle, and we know that we can uh, do some test points here. So we, we're going to start out with um, negative 5. How about over here, negative 5? We'll test that one. So if a negative 5, I'm going to get a negative and a negative, which is a positive. So that will be part of my domain. And we're going to count the 4. So everything here is good. 
guess I can do a little jacket there. Okay, we'll pick a point between negative 4 and 5, and 0 is always good. So with 0, we get a negative and a positive, which is negative. So the 0, it, this interval is not part of our, uh, our domain. And then we will do the same thing with the number like 6 over here. So if we take 6, we have a positive and a positive, which is another positive. So we're going to include everything over here. goes on forever. So we've got one interval here going from negative infinity to negative 4, including negative 4. We've got another interval here that goes from, negative, sorry, from positive 5 to 10, including 5, but not 10. So unioned with 5 to 10. And we've got a third interval on the other side of 10 that goes to infinity. So we've got 10 to infinity. And that's the domain of this function. Okay, hope you found this helpful.